Okay, so my last video got cut off as I was giving you the vertical line test of function. So if any vertical line intersects a graph in more than one point, the graph does not define y the function of x. That's because if you have a vertical line, like this, that means, and you hit more than one point on the graph, you hit a bunch of points, that means these x values have these x values have more than one y value. This x value, whatever it is, would have a y value here, a y value there, and a y value there. Okay? So example 6, we need the vertical line test to identify the graph in which y is a function of x. So the first one here, notice how if I run a vertical line up and down, it touches more than one point in the graph, so it's not a function. Let's say I ran one line right there. Do you see how this x value, this x value is 1, well the y value would be 2, and then negative 2. That's x value 1, and you get more than one output, the 2 and the negative 2. This one is a function, because you run a vertical line up and down, up and down, up and down, you want to touch one point in the graph. So every x only has one y, every input has only one output. Function here also. And this right here would not be a function if you run a vertical line here, you see you touch two points on that graph. So here and here, you see this x value, whatever this x value is, let's say this x value is 5, this y value would be what, 4, and this y value would be negative 4. So 5 would map onto 4 and negative 4. So the input of 5 yields more than one output. That would be not a function. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and try this on your own problem and quickly identify whether the graphs are, um, uh, have y the function of x. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so quickly this one is a function. This one is not a function. Function and not a function. Okay, let's move on to example 7 and analyze the graph of a function. This is a great example. Um, HIV infects and kills helper T cells. Because T cells stimulate the immune system to produce antibodies, the destruction disables the body's defense against other pathogens. By counting the number of T cells that remain active in the body, progression of HIV can be monitored. The fewer helper T cells, the more advanced the disease. The figure below shows a graph that is used to monitor the average progression of the disease. The average number of T cells, f of x, is a function of time after the infection, x. So it's saying that um, f of x is the um, average number of T cells and is a function of time. The time is what is your x value. So if you look at this carefully, here's the time and it's saying, let's say you, um, the time is after infection in years. So here is once you're infected, the time after infection in years. So here would be zero. This is when you are not infected. And so here is the T cell count, which is very high. Once you become infected, and the time, let's say you have a month or two months or half a year, which is right here, you have that big drop in your T cell count. And then it actually bounces back up, and I actually talked to somebody about that. They said that's normal, that your body is, um, once it gets infected, it drops in T cell count, but your body actually tries to recover, and it increases, but it, not enough. And then it comes back down slowly, and it's kind of progressive, a kind of steady decline of your T cell count. Okay? Explain why F represents the graph of function. Well, here we know it passes the vertical line test. And so for every value I have for x, say x is 1, the y value is the only one y value. In this case, it would be 700. This one would be a little over 500. This one would be a little over 400. This one would be a little over about 400, and so on. So each uh, x value has only one y value. Use the graph to find f of 8. So 8 is our input, or 8 is the x value. And 8 represents the time after infection years. So 8 
which is right here, and the um, output or the y value is 200. Okay. Now for part D, go for what value of x is f of x equal 350? Remember, f of x is your output or your y value. Y value. So when the y value is 350, go back to our graph here. Y is 350. Here's 300. 300 is about right over here. 350 would be between there, so that would be what I have here in red. 350 would be right here in red. Oops. Get a little bit closer. Zoom in. 350 would be right there. Okay? So if I look at my graph here and I try to follow 350 all the way, see what x value it is, it looks like it's about 6. Okay? So f of 6 equals 350. That's what I'm looking for. And in the, describe the general trend shown by the graph. And I kind of explained it a second ago. Was that in the first six months, T cells go down way rapidly. You can see here that in the first six months, the six months is right about there. From the first six months, it goes down rapidly. Then the next six months, it rises. So T cells. So the next six months, here is the first six months, and the next six months, goes up and rises. But then, slowly and steady, decline for many years. You can see that it slowly declined after that first, um, or the next six months, it just slowly declines for many years, okay? That's an interesting problem. That's actually one that we actually look at um, function in a real life problem there. So let's go ahead and talk about, this is a very important topic. Um, you're gonna see, we're gonna talk about domain range probably in every exam between now and the end of the semester. Something called domain and range of a function graph. Remember we talked about domain being um, the set of inputs or what can X be? And ranges that outputs, what can y be? Okay, so if we look at this right here, we look at this function right here, this function in red. The domain is what can x be, and the domain is going to be from here to here. It's on the x axis. And they're looking at all the values that x can be to hit this graph. Okay, and the range is what can y be, and it'd be all the values on this y axis because once you find any y values, you're going to be on this graph right here. Okay, for example, 8, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you can see the graph better. It says to use the graph of each function to identify its domain and its range. We're looking at first our domain, and I want you to do this in interval notation. It doesn't say in directions, but in interval notation. I look at this graph here, and I want to find out what is the domain. So what can x be? If you look at this graph here, it looks like this value from here all the way to here is what x can be, and that's when it hits the graph. So my domain is going to go from negative 2 all the way to 1. So negative 2 all the way to 1. And notice how I'm going to include that 2 because that 2 is colored in. So I'm going to the bracket around there. And I'm going to include the 1 because that's also colored in there. The range is what can y be. So if I look at this graph here, this is what y can be from here to here. What's that lowest y value? The lowest y value is 0, and the highest y value is 3. So it goes from 0 to 3. And I'm going to include both the endpoints because both are the colored circle. Okay. 
In part B, I want to look at the domain. I'm going to do domain in red. The domain from here all the way to here. What can x be? Well, the domain is going to be from negative 3. You do the smallest number first. All the way, or from left to right. Negative 3 all the way to 2. And notice how this point here is open. So we're not going to include that negative 3. If you print these. And this 2 here is closed or colored in. So we're going to close it off with a bracket. Okay, the range is what can y be? So what can y be? Well, y can be from here to here. Okay, so the range is going to be from 1, the smallest y value I see, the smallest y value is 1, all the way up to 2. So 1 to 2. I'm not going to include the 1 because from here it's open, and the y value is closed here, so it's bracket. Okay. In part C, Again, my domain is going to be what can x be? It looks like the, the first x point is right here. So it's going to go from negative 2 all the way to 1. So the domain goes from negative 2 all the way to 1. And do you notice how I'm drawing this right here? Normally we don't draw this. I'm only drawing this because it's the first time we're seeing this. But normally I don't draw this on the graph. You just look at it and go, it goes from negative 2 to 1. And I'm going to cl uh, close off negative 2 or use a bracket. So it's closed right here. And I'm going to leave the 1 open with, with a parentheses. And the domain, I mean the range, here I did domain. The range is going to be what y can be. The so y goes from here all the way up to here. So it goes from 1 to 5. And notice how here, at one lowest point, and one's the lowest point, which is right there, notice how that is actually a point on the graph. We're actually going to use a bracket around there. And then we're going to include the 5 also at the point right there. So 1 to 5. Okay, so again, normally I don't put, um, I don't draw these on the graph. I did it just to emphasize um, what we're looking at. So let's go ahead and do D and E. Actually, I'm going to omit E. That's not going to be what we're going to cover in this class. We're not going to cover that one. So in D, we're going to go ahead and look at what can um, domain, what can X be? So the domain, well, it looks like it goes all the way from here all the way up to here. So it goes from negative infinity, because this arrow goes on forever, right here. This arrow, how many graphs goes on forever? So this X value goes on forever this way. So it goes from negative infinity all the way to 4. And we're going to do parentheses around infinity, and the 4 is closed, so we'll use a bracket there. And the range will be from here all the way to there. I'm going to erase that and get a little bit closer. So it'll be from the small value y is down here, and the highest point can be up there. Notice how um, I use an arrow there. I'm trying to use an arrow. Because this y, this graph goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Eventually, it's going to go on forever and ever and ever. Um, and so that y value goes on forever too. Now the range is going to go from zero, which is the smallest y value. The smallest y value is right here, zero, all the way up to infinity. Now you um, parentheses around infinity, and I'm going to include the zero because I'm including that point right there, a four zero. The zero is the y value. This is the hardest part for students to do. Um, last semester when I taught this class is find the domain range. But once they got it, they um, understood it and they saw it on every exam. I always ask for domain range on a lot of problems. So you look at the graph, what can X be, what can't X be. Again, we're going to skip um, part E and I'm going to have you do these two on your own. Go ahead and skip part C. And I'm going to have a pause the video and I'm going to have you um, try these on your own and then check your answers when you replay the video. Okay, so on part A, the domain goes from negative 2 to 1, and I use bracket around both of those. And the range is from 0 to 3, and I use bracket around both of those. In part B, the domain is negative 2 to 1, parentheses around the negative 2, and brackets around the 1. The range is negative 1 to 2, brackets around the negative 1, and parentheses around the 2. And that's the end of our section.